sit up dancing band or you have been here? Maybe? Yeah, embarrassingly enough, this is my first ADE. ADE for me was always very industry and I didn't, you know, I, I kind of left that up to agents and managers and record label heads. And now that I'm, you know, getting more involved in my own way my own record label runs and obviously performing tonight and it was it was time for me to come here for sure. And you are playing on the Armada Night. How do you feel about that? Have you played on other Armada Nights as well? Well, I've been very tight with Armada now since 2008, since I combined Rebrand, you know, and I, I sort of married Rebrand as one of Armada's labels. Um, so I still do the A&R, but they run the label. So it made sense, and I now have a great relationship with them, and I've done, you know, a State of Trance events, I've done Armada events, Armada tours. Uh, you know, recently I went to Russia with Shogun, Ruben de Ronde and um, John O'Gallaghan. So for me, the Armada thing's pretty natural. I was born in the UK, yeah, but I've lived in Canada for 25 years now. What is so special about that country? Is that something that... How much time do you have? How much time do you have? <laughs> for me, Canada is... It marries the perfect combination of, like, England, because obviously, you know, it was originally a colony, and we still have the Queen on our money. I don't know if colony is the right word, but you know what I mean. And, you know, it's close enough to the U.S. that it has a lot of influences from the U.S. also, but it's definitely its own country. You know, we have universal health care, we have a very relaxed way of life, nobody's stressed out, nobody's what angry. What about club night? The club, you know, club night? Well, because of that, the clubs are that much better because people are very relaxed when they go out. The club nights are incredible. Montreal is known as an after-hours city, a lot of great events. Toronto has some of the best events in the country at the government and you know festivals now Vancouver Alvaro is running a show out there incredible parties Calgary Edmonton I mean you name it we're very lucky I struggle a bit in the studio I'm much more comfortable as a DJ but I've been lucky enough to you know find the right melodies and the right combinations of strings and sounds and but I struggle with bass and drums and low end so protoculture was a natural fit to work with because that's his strength. His bass lines are incredible, his drums are incredible, and his engineering abilities are good. You know, I can design the house, but I'm not good at building it. You know, I can design it in a way that looks beautiful, but I'm not the guy to get my hands dirty and build it. It's just not my skill. I've been trying for 12 years to master the art, and I just can't get it right. So I've been super lucky to work with other people. I mean, that being said, I've done plenty of songs on my own, like, you know, Sun in the Winter, and. Uh, you know, even going back as far as Airtight, Jessica Riddle, but to be really good in the studio, I feel I need to work with other people. Um, coming up, we have a single with Tanya Cigar, a single with Jue Dan, a single with Kerry Leva, um, and the album, the last album had some down tempo and some chill. The new album is going to be all dance floor, spring next year. So I'm working hard on it now. Yeah. Uh, would you like to tell us if you have vocal tracks in it? Well, that's, uh, any of the collaborations coming? Well, that's the, the ones with Kerry and, and Tanya and Dwayne are vocal tracks, obviously. Um, and then the rest are going to be instrumentals. I'm doing a track with Thomas Heredia that I'm looking forward to finishing. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, he's great. How did you manage to meet those vocalists? It was your own uh, thing or did Armada help you to find the vocalist? No, those I met on my own. Armada's introduced me to a couple, but I mean, Perry and I kind of met joking over Twitter and we got in touch over email. Tanya's Canadian. Dan and I met at ASOP 550 in London and then we talked about working together. I mean, it's a small industry. It's not so hard to meet people and, you know, get in touch with people. It's a pretty small circle that actually work together. You know. So you are happy with your label on the level that is in at the moment? The recognition that it has, so you think more work has to be done? Both. I'm very happy with where it's at right now, but it's not where I want it to be. So I think. For instance, what things would you like to do better? Well, I would like to build artists more. I mean, I'm really trying to build Steve Haynes, Solid Stone, Johan Malmgren, Protoculture, Badios, and. But get more into albums and artist development with them rather than just releasing singles. But that's something Armada and I have to get together and think about next year. Today you have a back-to-back -back set or is it? Well, back-to-back -back is always a little different. We're just going to bang it out. It's a short set. But like my radio show, for example, Cycles yeah. Radio, it's two hours. 
very diverse. You know, it's mostly trance, it's mostly melodic, energetic, but it, it dips into techno, it dips into like, you know, and Junebeat style of trance, and it's, it really kind of follows a path. And so for me, that's where I'm most comfortable. I keep joking that I should have started a radio show 10 years ago, I'd be a lot bigger DJ, but it's so something that I only... That, that the radio show is a big vehicle for the DJ to... Absolutely. His career, right? Well, that's why I'm saying I should have started it 10 years ago, because I would have been a much bigger DJ, but what it's done for me is really shown people what I play and how I play it. So when people come to gigs now, they're not confused. For example, if I make, if I'm in the studio and I make a couple of trance tracks, then I don't make anything for three months, then I make a track that has some electro influences. Then people come to my gig thinking I'm gonna play electro, and then I play trance, they're confused. And I understand that, and I didn't understand that for a while. I thought, it's all good music, what does it matter? And then I realized, like, you have to let people know what you're gonna play when you arrive. And one, you know, three tracks a year, production doesn't do that. But a weekly radio show, two hours a week, tells everyone exactly where my head is at musically, what my style is like mixing. And so the radio show has been the perfect vehicle for me to let people know what I play. Now when a promoter books me or a fan comes to a show, they know exactly what they're gonna hear from me and that's what makes people happy. The show has become popular enough now that we're getting labels, big labels, saying, I'm gonna give it to you a week early, I wanna make sure you play it on Cycles, which is, Two years ago, I couldn't even get promos from them two years ago. So it's incredible. What thing is good for you in a, in a club night? Is, is the crowd? Is your technique behind the text? You are technical? Or you are more with the, your emotions? Uh, with your interaction with the crowd? Uh... I, I'm not as much of an interactor. I'm very aware of the crowd. And I do, I will pick a couple of people and focus on them. but. I'm not a hands in the air guy. I'm very like, my head is down. I come from like the Sasha and Digweed school of DJing. Yeah, exactly. I'm very technical, but I'm technical to create that emotion. What? I, I don't like, like I really, I, I have a plan. I'm not just playing records. I know exactly when I want the next record to come in and how loud and bass. And when someone tugs on my arm when I'm focused, I'm sort of like, you know, for the sake of the thousand people in front of me, I want to be left alone to focus so I can really do the best job. I don't like to just play a record and stand back. I like to mix constantly and add things. And that's just my style, you know? Uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about your Facebook? Do you interact a lot with your fans? I do, I'm a huge interactor. Um, I really quite like Facebook and Twitter, and especially traveling, you know, Twitter's been great on the, you know, on the, in the airport when you're bored, being able to interact with people. I also learn a lot from it. Um, from reading other people and interacting with not just fans but like news accounts of Formula One and all the things I'm interested in. So definitely hit me up on Twitter. It's Twitter, it's at Max Graham. And then Facebook is DJ Max Graham. It's Facebook.com slash DJ Max Graham. And on my Facebook I post a lot of pictures, a lot of funny stuff, not just you know my gigs, my tracks. I post a lot of things I find funny to give a reflection of my personality rather than just an advertising. But and Facebook and Twitter are very different. This is something personal or yeah. something that your PR told you to do it? Oh no, I, I have no PR when it comes to Facebook and Twitter. I am the only person, I think I'm the only person that's ever posted on my Facebook or Twitter. I don't think anyone else has ever posted on my behalf. Um, I have, you know, I've had social media companies approach me and everything they've told me to do, I'm already doing or I can tell them how they could, they're actually wrong and how I, I do it oh, better. No. <laughs> So well, you can have your own PR company then? Uh, maybe that's an idea one day. Sasha is coming back. Number one at Pitbull. Do you think these guys can come back again? Yeah. I mean, you're one hit away from being back on top, you know? I think Sasha's style of DJing is coming back. I think, you know, playing hits and short records has gotten a lot of new people into the scene. But now they're looking for more. They're looking for deeper, they're looking for more complex, they're learning more. And to really go and hear someone who can weave a story, I mean, Sasha's the best on the planet. And if you give him eight hours, it will change your life. And he's changed my life, he's changed so many up and coming DJs. Funk Agenda just posted yesterday on Twitter how he can't even 
can't even speak properly when he's near Sasha, and they're like friends. So that's the effect that he has on all of us. He's the guy that I learned from, and I think that style of DJing is coming back. And because of that, we're going to see him, you know, grow again and grow again, and deservedly so. He's a musical genius when it comes to DJing.